What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Pride Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Miko, joined by my guy Morgan. And Morgan, it's playoff week. We're locked in. I got I finally got my playoff shirt. Came in the mail today, so I finally got to rock that. But yo, we finally get to talk playoff football. We finally get to look ahead to again the Lions making that push, as unlikely as it may have seemed at the beginning of the year, making that push towards a, a Super Bowl appearance um, as they square off against the Los Angeles Rams this week. And this is going to be a little bit different from what we normally do in the context that we're going to do basically a two-part film study. This first video, we're going to take a head, take a look at the Rams' offense and kind of just break down some of the things the way things that they do well in this first video and then the next one we're going to look ahead at the defense but morgan when you look at this rams offense what's the first thing that kind of stands out in your mind uh they're efficient you know they're 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 going to get big plays when they're there for them um but stafford's got he's been operating at a really high clip you know the whole year uh cop obviously is still a good player they have puka nakua who's explo exploded onto the scene this year um, they got some good some guys on the offensive line that are playing well. Uh, Steve Avila, you guys will probably remember that name uh, from a couple draft cycles ago. I think Eric might have really liked Steve Avila, if I remember correctly. Um, but they got some good players. Kevin Dotson at right guard, uh, Havenstein, Havenstein, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, at right tackle. So it's a good unit. Um, they don't have... Like you're, we, you know, we talked about this in the Pride of Detroit Slack a ton today, but they don't have the CD Lamb or the Justin Jefferson weapon like we've seen the last couple weeks and at the end of the regular season. But they, they have playmakers, they have some ballers, and the Lions are going to have to be sound on defense if they're going to want to at least slow this offense down, right, Nico? Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I love that 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 call out again. That this wide receiver core maybe isn't of the the skill level of a Justin Jefferson or a CD Lamb. Um, but like you said, like this is something that we went back and forth on quite a bit because I think people see the big year that, that Puka Nakua had and it makes them nervous. They think back a couple seasons ago when, again, Cooper Cup was pushing to do the same thing that Tyreek Hill was doing earlier this year of breaking Calvin Johnson's record of most receiving yards. And I think that's one of those things that makes people nervous. But as we kind of get into the film, yes, they are dangerous in some aspects. But at the same time, like you've been kind of telling me, like it's not nearly as bad. Um, I think as some fans think it is. Yeah. And it like the reasoning is a little bit difficult to explain. And I tried it today uh, to some of the POD staff in one of our Slack channels and uh, they can beat you in a number of ways. Uh, but Nakua and cup or Demarcus Robinson, none of them are of the caliber where it's like, they're just going to run a go ball and chuck it. Well, they can, uh, you know, they're, they might find success there. It's just not, you know, it's not the same as uh as you would see, uh, you know, with some of these other offenses with prolific, you know, elite, elite receivers. So uh, this first one here is a, is one of my favorites I came across on their film. Um, it's something that, you know, a concept that they run uh, pretty frequently. And uh, yeah, go ahead. You can roll it, Miko, and we'll get a good, good look at it first here. So a lot of short motion from Nakua. And then he releases on the uh, out of that motion into the flat. And that's important because it gets the eyes of the defense looking down at him. Just, you know, obviously he commands a, a lot of respect and a lot of eyes already. And they catch that safety for New York. I want to say it's 20, 28 there. Catch him flat-footed a little bit. He's peeking into the backfield. And before you know it, uh, Demarcus Robinson's running by him for that corner. And, uh, yeah, it's a big gain for the Rams. But it's something that, again, the Lions defense is going to have to be good at. Against the Rams, like you know, we've talked about in previous weeks, eye discipline is going to be really big. Yeah, um, it is. It is a McVay offense, so there is a lot of motion, and some of that motion is just to help Stafford decipher whether it's man or zone. Uh, but then a lot of the motion, some of the jet motions, you know, going across the formation, it's going to be to get the defense's eyes in places they shouldn't be, so Stafford can hit you know big plays like this. And it's like plays like this, Morgan, really do remind me of some of the things that the Lions do really well, where, again, you know, you may use an Amon Ross St. Brown or, or a Sam Laporta to run some of these shorter routes. But then you're allowing a Josh Reynolds, a Khalif Raymond or a Jamison Williams to kind of beat the defense over the top. And you're kind of like you're do like you're saying, you're expecting the defense's eyes to focus on the guy that they're considered the most dangerous in this case, a Puka Nakua. Or, or a Cooper Cup, and then you're still leaking out a Tyler Higby deep. You're leaking out 
a Demarcus Robinson deep, and it's just like you're hoping that someone on that defense kind of falls asleep and and loses contain on their assignment. For sure, Miko, and that's that's what we were talking about before we got on to Stafford's in his fifteenth year. Uh, he's going to be able to determine pre-snap what a defense is trying to do to him. So some of these blitzes that the Lions have been running at, you know, the likes of Nick Mullins and uh, so on and so forth, aren't going to be as successful because Stafford's going to know, you know, what's coming and he's going to get the ball out to his hot receiver and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's going to be, and like your point earlier too, Stafford's excellent. He's been doing it for so long now at moving the defense with his eyes. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I know the no look passes are the ones that get highlighted for Stafford, but a lot of the big plays he makes aren't the the flashy plays, if you will. It's him holding a safety on the left side of the field with his eyes and just in a moment's notice snapping to the right side, getting and throwing a you know dart to the boundary, right? So yeah. that's the stuff that's the stuff where he's really good at and where he can he still really makes a lot of his hay is just being able to manipulate that just defenses because he's been doing this since 2009, folks. It's I know that makes a lot that makes me feel old. I was going to say, but, uh, same. <laughs> <laughs> the Lions drafted Stafford when I was a senior in high school. So, yeah, I'm feeling a little seasoned uh, by that I was, fact. I was a but... year, listen, don't feel that seasoned. I was a year <laughs> out. I think I was like one year into being engaged. So, trust me, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, Crazy. But one thing that he's also like, to your point, right, Stafford being so good and being able to add so many tools to his tool belt, one of the things that I think he's gotten so much better at as the years have gone on is some of these touch passes, right? And specifically when we start talking about getting into the red zone and not always having to fire a missile into a guy, like he's gotten really good at these back of the back of the end zone type of layup type of throws that are really difficult for a lot of quarterbacks to hit. But Stafford finds a way of making these look like layups like he kind of does here with Cooper Cup. Yeah, and this is an impressive throw when you think about when he throws it, right? And great point, Miko. He is really good at layering in these balls because early on in his career, if y'all remember, excuse me, everything was a piss missile, right? Everything had a vapor trail yeah. coming off of it because he wanted to throw the ball hard. That was like chubby face Stafford, right? Remember that? Now yeah, we, got, yeah, yeah. we got skinny face Stafford and he knows how to layer balls. So you can see he checks the play at the line of scrimmage. And uh, this is just a really good throw, man. He knows he's about to get hit. Uh, they had a free runner coming off the edge. He actually doesn't get hit. but And you see him throw his hand up. He knows this ball's good. So this is actually a better view of it. Try to stop it right when he lets it go, Miko. Because um, that's the impressive part of this here. Boom. So, like, he's letting this ball go. And look where Cooper Cup is. He's barely at the end zone. And he's about to get into his break. So this is Stafford just throwing it to a spot throwing it with a hell of a lot of anticipation and mm-hmm. Cooper Cup Cooper Cup getting to that spot before the DB. So if this happens, like this is one of those plays where you just kind of got to throw your hands up because like, damn, that's a really good throw, right? <laughs> well, yeah, because you as a, as a DB, you're looking to challenge the receiver again before he even gets to the end zone. So you're trying to like, you don't even know which way he's going at this point. And right. for the ball to already be in the air, again, they're probably already being some sort of conversation or understanding of what this play is. Cooper Cup has all the advantage in this situation. And again, this is this is beautiful to watch again in any other situation than what we want to see on Sunday. One thing about like that I'm really impressed with again is with Stafford's ability to throw it to a specific spot is like him doing it off his back foot. Like a lot of quarterbacks, again, like they can't make this throw. So it's this great combination of the great arm strength that we know he has, plus the touch that he's added to his repertoire you know, this later in his, in his career. Yeah. Excellent point, Miko. And off platform, different arm angle. He drops the arm and just like kind of flicks it out there. And he's like, oh, I'm going to throw it towards the boundary. And I bet you Cooper will get there. And to, you know, to Cup's credit too, this is rapport built with Stafford since he got to LA in 2021. So yeah, this is just a, just one of those throws where you got to throw up your hands and Baltimore's answer for this is pretty good. They got a free runner off the edge. And Mm -hmm. it was a DB, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And this is a good blitz, too, because they check into this. Baltimore does at the very end um, because it doesn't look like he's about to blitz until Stafford's about to snap it. The DB takes a couple steps towards the line of scrimmage and then ends up going. So this is kind of the blitz I would like the Lions to utilize, this type of blitz, if you will, some of these delayed uh, blitzes or, you know, run games. But 
this is what you're going to have to beat Stafford with, with in terms of blitzes. And then still, he's he can beat you if he makes a throw like this. This is just a dot. Yeah, yeah. I think you and I were talking about this as well. Like again, going back to that experience that he's that he's picked up. A lot of this stuff is going to have, like you're saying, this late last minute adjustment by the defense. Like that's what it's going to have to be because he's savvy enough to be able to survey a defense and know where pressure is coming from, what you're trying to do in in terms of coverage, and make the proper adjustments. You know, in a Sean McVay offense. Yep, and that's another thing too. Stafford definitely has McVay's uh, confidence, and you're going to see him similar to Golf does in this offense with Ben Johnson. McVay is going to give Stafford the discretion to change and check the play at the line of scrimmage. So, again, it's going to be a bit of a chess match <clears throat> between Aaron Glenn and McVay and Stafford, right? Like, it's it's going to be interesting to watch. In my opinion, that's going to be the matchup of the game. I know we're yeah. going to get into the Lions uh, offense against the Rams defense in our next video. But, yeah, this is going to be the, – the defense is going to come have to come ready to play and they're going to have to be sound – and communicate well. Some of the communication breakdowns that happened in week 18 against Minnesota, I kind of yeah. chalked up to just CJ being out there again and, you know, him, Iffy, and Kirby just trying to figure things out, you know, between them. So I want, I hope a lot of that's cleaned up because as much as Nick Mullins made the Lions pay in week 18, Stafford can do that more if they, if things are ugly back there and there's people running free. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, too, in, in regards to the communication with, you know, again, the Lions switching out so many safeties, you know, going back, if you go back and look at the snap counts for each of those three guys, it's relatively even, right? I think CJ ended up having the most, but between Iffy and Kirby, like, that's a lot of bodies constantly switching out. And again, you're having to determine, you know, who's responsible for what. And when you have a guy like Cooper Cup, but also this up and coming rookie in Puka Nakua, that communication has to be sound. You have to know who is responsible for who. And kind of like you mentioned earlier, the, the Rams like to run a lot of motion. They like to run a lot of bunch formations. If you guys aren't sound, you can get exposed in plays like this that Baltimore kind of had a tough time with as well. Yeah, and I, when I threw out the Ravens tape, I noticed a lot of this. The Rams did get them on a lot of these switch releases. So <clears throat> you'll see the motion from Cup late, right? So then they execute a switch release which means uh, the out of that bunch, you know, Cup's releasing that way, Robinson's taking a step uh, inside and releasing straight up the middle, um, and that's who ends up getting the ball. Um, so, yeah, this is just one of those switch releases, and in zone or in man, either way, any whatever concept the lines are running, they're going to have to be better with passing things off. So it looks like Baltimore's in man here, and mm -hmm. there's just a little bit of confusion as to who's taking uh, Nakua. Is that Nakua in the bunch? And then who's yeah. taking Demarcus Robinson? So, yeah, again, and people kind of think that man is this, like when, when defenses run man coverage, you know this, Miko, you were a DB, that it's like brainless and, okay, you just got to stay with your man. That's all it is. No, folks, like in today's NFL, all this motion, all this pre-snap motion, these switch releases, that's where things you have to talk like, okay, you switch with him. I'm staying with him. Yeah. And it has to happen. Like, you, you know, in an instant, almost pre-snap or as the ball snap, like that decision has to be made or else you get this kind of thing here where Robinson's running and no one's within 10 yards of him. And at the very least in, in those situations, Morgan, you as, as, as someone who's in man coverage, you at least have to know your responsibility. Like you can't be the person guessing. So in a play like this, Number 26 has to at least be sure on who he thinks he has. And you can't still be guessing as the ball snapped and guys are running towards you because he guesses wrong. He takes the tight end or number 88 here instead of, you know, again, probably taking Nakua and then, you know, running with him in coverage. If, if you guess wrong, this is the type of stuff that happens. And so, you know, it's, it's difficult. And it's something that I, again, I'm, somewhat worried about when it comes to the Lions because again this is the type of stuff where you're kind of at the mercy of the defense if you're going to choose to run a man concept of okay everybody has to be on the same page and if at the very least everybody has to know what their responsibilities are yep 100 percent. and you know like we talked about it goes it goes for man and zone and zone you have to pass people off you have to communicate you know but and man you, again communication is key and in my opinion 
this is the kind of stuff that got Jerry Jacobs taken off the starting defense, right? Like just communication pre-snap. Yeah. Knowing where to be, knowing who you have, because this is just free yardage for Stafford. Stafford knows immediately who he's going to go to. He's like, oh, I got Demarcus Robinson running by himself. That's a easy, that's a layup. And the way the Lions are going to win this game is to give Stafford as few layups as possible. Because as good as he is, he's a really, really good quarterback in this league. Mm-hmm. He's he's going to, like we talked about it before we got on, he's going to miss here and there. He's not going to be perfect. He's not one of those quarterbacks where it's the placement is perfect every single time or the decision-making is perfect every single time. But if you give him instances like this where it's just, you know, taking candy from a baby, he's going to take it, right? Yeah, if you're going to give him layups, if you're going to give him easy throws – you're you're asking for him to basically just march down into the red zone. Now, like you're saying, the the best thing that the Lions defense could do is make it difficult, make him have to gamble because that's something that we as fans of of who have watched him for so many years know that's what Matthew Stafford will do. If he gets into situations where he has to make plays, he's going to press. He'll force a ball into double coverage because he believes that he can. And at least then you have a chance to make a play. It's just as much an opportunity for you for your guys to make a play as it is for him to make a play in that situation. But this type of stuff, guys open in the middle of the field, is is, is a problem. Yes, sir, Miko. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't have said it better myself. Make things difficult, man. Make those windows tight. You know, don't be out of phase. Um, try not to get beat deep. I do think like they're going to let them complete some of these passes underneath. Um, mm-hmm. to, to the likes of Nakua and Cup, but like they've preached all year, just run to the football, uh, limit big plays, get a couple takeaways. And yeah, don't let them take the top off. That's one thing I don't want to see because as good as Nakua and Cup and them are, none of them have the speed or like just the crazy ass athleticism like Justin Jefferson or CD Lamb have where they're just, you know, demigods out there catching the football. Okay. Um, but yeah, if I, I think if they get beat deep this year or this week, it would be because of busted coverage. And I'm really hoping that doesn't happen because I want for every point that the Rams get against the Lions, if the Lions make them earn it, like there's no, you know, penalty fuel drives or yeah. you know, that this, that, and the other. I think the Lions are going to be in good shape, man. Similar, like we talked about before we got on, it's similar to the Cowboys philosophy. If you take away... The CD Lamb, the bust, the Derek Barnes play where he didn't say get the sack and then CD Barnes scores 92 yards. That's about as good as you can defend. Yeah. A guy like the, the Cowboys offense is humming, and that's as, that's about as good as you can do. Like, that's about as good as you can hope for. Like, so yeah. Yeah. No, and I and I'm in, I'm in full agreement with you, right? Like, if you can start at least, like you're saying, make it difficult, make them have to make tough throws, make him have to fit passes into really contested, you know, coverage. Things will go in your in your favor, and also if you can get pressure on him, again Matthew can he's not the most mobile quarterback, right? He's not going to sit here and you know do what Lamar Jackson or Dak Prescott might do to you. Now he is though capable of still extending plays if pressure kind of gets to him. Yeah, and you know I we were talking about it before, but I put his athleticism at like one tier higher than old Goffs. You know, like he's. Mm-hmm. Just a smidge more athletic. His feet aren't necessarily as heavy as Jared's. No disrespect. They just look heavy when he runs. Um, but, yeah, this is just a really good pl- play by Stafford. You, again, you got the motion from Higby. Uh, clean pocket initially. Double, like, double, you know, pumps it twice, pulls it down, which, again, that's growth from him and just over the years. And this is a good job by Robinson in the scramble drill because he's obviously, you know, he ran his route there at the top and mm-hmm. he's just keeping eyes on Stafford makes himself available and good throw, man. This, this stuck out to me because you don't see this a ton from Stafford. It's, it's pretty much on schedule these days. He's, a, he's in the McVay offense. He's old. He's not trying to run around a ton. He's trying to get that thing out quick so he doesn't get killed. Uh, but yeah, he can still do this. And the line it's hit or miss. There's some instances where I'm like, man, you guys are getting him killed. And then there's others where I'm like, they're protecting him pretty damn well. So it's going to be interesting to see what we get. Yeah. I was going to say like, that's the thing that really stands out from this play. Like you were saying, like, this is a pretty clean pocket, but he basically starts to go into the scramble mode of like, okay, what I want isn't available to me. So like I now have to go off script and goes back to what you were also saying. 
his receivers know like okay well matthew starts going off script like it's it's funny typically when quarterbacks go off script it's always like hey run to the like run to the quarterback try to get open that way receivers with matthew i feel like are taught the opposite if matthew yep. starts scrambling go down go down mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got that arm strength man and yeah, and again, off platform, little arm flick, uh, little flick of the wrist, and it's downfield, man. Good, good ball near the boundary. He's got to get it over the over the DB. <laughs> yeah, I again, I don't think this is going to be exciting because it's not one of those rush plans where the Lions have to be as disciplined with their rush lanes. You know, they're mm-hmm. like whether they're playing fields or you know any of these mobile quarterbacks where you don't want to. You want to rush the passer, but you want to do it like this, right? You want to do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> in, in my opinion, this is a week where you tell Hutch, be like, win quickly, like you did last week. You know, you yeah. know whip some ass, whip some ass early in the rep. If Stafford scrambles and gets a six yard gain and slides, so be it. Like, that's not going to kill us. So, you know, right? I was going to say, like, this is a week where you tell your coverage, like, listen, you guys can hang in there. We're just going to have the defense line, defensive line really just try and collapse the pocket and it gets them back to doing a lot of the things they were doing early in the season, Morgan, where they were having a lot of success. Now, granted, that was against inexperienced quarterbacks and quarterbacks that were probably, you know, going through their progressions a little bit too much or not knowing where to go in their progressions. But Matthew Stafford is, is just as susceptible to, again, early pressure, pressure up the middle and things of that nature. Yep. And he, you know, similar to golf, he doesn't, if there's immediate pressure in his lap, he almost does what golf does and just kind of turtles, right? Like, all right, let me just, <laughs> I'm going to take this hit, go down. So he can be sacked. Um, but then at the same time, I know the guys said this on the podcast earlier this week, but if the lions can create pressure with four or five, they're going to be in good shape because then obviously I know it sounds simple, but you can dedicate more bodies to the back end and Mm -hmm. covering the likes of Nakua and cup. So uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's there and to their, to their credit though. And I know we're about to look at a clip like this. The the Rams have run the ball pretty well recently. Um, Yeah. They run it out of a a bunch of different formations, a a bunch of different personnel packages. So it, it does make it, hard to nail down what they're doing very similar to the lions. Um, But yeah, if, if the lions similar to this rest of the year, if they can make them, excuse me, one dimensional, that would go a long way. So here's a, they're in the red zone here. The ball's on the 10, I believe it was second and three. And this is just really good execution. I circled Kevin Dotson here because he does a good job of getting uh, some a body on 93 and then climbing and getting a good block on Demario Davis. And it just makes it a very, a pretty easy touchdown for Kyron Williams, right? Yeah. Again, this is stuff that we typically applaud the Lions offensive line for, right? Again, getting bodies on bodies, moving up to the second level and, and making easy cutback lanes for your running back. But again, the line, the, the, the Rams have a really impressive rookie wide receiver. They also have a really impressive rookie running back as well that have, you know, again, very similar to some of the success that the Lions were able to have this year. Yeah, and Kyron's, I think, 5'9", five five uh, 200 pounds. You know, he's a he's a pretty shifty back. He His vision's good. That's what kind of – that's what caught me a couple times watching his film was just the vision. So even this one, the you know, a little bit of a cutback lane because uh, Havenstein, the right tackle, and, again, Kevin Dotson do such a good job of washing their guys down the line of scrimmage. And it creates a pretty big cutback lane for Kyron. And, uh, yeah, just makes it easy. Just cuts behind the back, the the butt cheek of Havenstein. And I hope I'm saying that right. He's been playing well. <laughs> uh, Havenstein, Havenstein. But, <clears throat> yeah, they, they do a lot of this. It's They run power. They run zone. They mix it up. Uh, but, again, I the Lions finished first in the NFL. First. Yeah. And run, run defensive uh, DVOA. So if they can slow down Kyron Williams and get Stafford into a lot of, you know, third and obvious, then I feel, I feel better about the, you know, the probability that Nakua and Cup are going to just completely go off. Right. Yeah. I was going to say like the, the thing that makes you again, feel confident about the Lions going up against the rushing attack is that they've literally gone against 
again, no disrespect to Kyron Williams, but they've gone against some of the better running backs in the NFL and have been able to contain those guys <clears throat> or at the very least make their make their lives very difficult. Outside of probably what the Ravens game, everyone else has really had to 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 earn every, you know, yard that they've gotten. Um the thing that I think though that makes the Rams at least unique is that because they do so much motion, because there's so much um in, in, in terms of what they use Nakua for, for what they use Cup for in terms of, you know, reverses and things like that, it makes you have to be more disciplined in your eyes when it comes down to run defense as well, because is it going to go to Kyron Williams? Are they going to fake it to, to, to one of the wide receivers? Is it a play action? Like there's a lot of those things that still become in play, even when it looks like it's a run play. Yeah, and yeah, to your point too, Miko, McVay does a great job, just like any really good offensive play caller does of stacking plays and concepts. So, you know, he'll show you over the course of the game three or four times where they're going to run Kyron Williams out of this formation and it's going to look very similar. And then, you know, late in the second half, they're going to hit you on a play action boot out of that same look where Nakua releases late. You know, it's, it's things like that. And that's how they get uh, a lot of their run after catch. So I, I noticed that like they throw them to Higby, Nakua, Cup, uh, some of these short little like smoke screens um, out by yeah. the boundary. And they do a good job of executing that too. All their skill players have bought in. They block downfield much like the Lions do. So, yeah, it's going to take effort from everybody to win their one-on-ones and run to the football because it, it's going to be, if I had to guess, that's going to be the defensive plan is you're going to allow the likes of Nakua and Cup to catch football. That, that's just going to happen. They're going to get them the football, but – yeah. I expect them to, you know, keep things in front of them and tackle well and limit the damage and see what you see what you can do from there. Yeah. I I and again, I think you and I are on the same page in this that like I don't I don't think the 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 Rams offense is nearly as imposing as a lot of people think it is, right? I think a lot of people, you know, look at Matthew Stafford, look at what he's done when he was here and also, you know, again, what he was able to put together down this stretch for the Rams and think like, oh, well, he's going to come in here. He's going to light us, light us up for 400 yards, five touchdowns. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be that. I They're going to move the football. Absolutely. Right. I, that's something I fully expect them to be able to do. But I do expect this Lions defense to still win their fair share battles to get their, you know, to get a couple turnovers here and there. And I think that'll be just enough to keep this Rams offense, you know, out of rhythm a bit. Yeah, I agree, Miko. And that's the cool thing about playing a quarterback who doesn't really pose a big threat with his legs. Again, I know I made the point earlier, but you you are a little bit more free in what you can do in terms of man to man coverage, uh, mixing things up on third and long. Um, you know, some of those simulated pressures. I hope they utilize that where you know you might. You might drop Hutch, who's been giving Havenstein hell all day, and then you blitz Brian Branch and Iffy off the edge, and I would love a little strip sack on Stafford. That would make me crazy. Just a nice little little strip sack, maybe a touchdown, let the roof come off of Ford Field. Absolutely. And there's only one <laughs> thing I really ask of this defense, honestly, going into this game, and that is that you do keep – honestly, I would love for the Lions to keep both safeties deep. In, in this game particularly. Like do whatever you want to do underneath zone, man, do whatever you want to do in that concept. This does not feel like a game where you should again try to gamble on whether or not you can cover deep with one safety. Because I feel like if you go into a concept with that with Matthew Stafford, it may not be Puka Nakua, it may not be Cooper Cup, but Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell, Tyler Higby, like one of those guys could definitely break loose and you're now looking at another twenty yard game just because you were trying to cover the deeper part of the field with just one safety. Yep. I'm right there with you, man. And you know, to the point we were talking about earlier with Stafford moving safeties with his eyes, right? Like that's where if you're in cover one and you just have a single high safety, that's where I do think those safeties could get manipulated and messed around with Stafford, just, you know, with his, you know, veteran uh, play, if you will, just, he knows what to do. He knows how to move people. He knows how to fool people. So yeah, I'm right there with you. It would be nice if the Lions could stop the run without having to, you know, have a bunch of defenders near the line of scrimmage. I don't think they'll need to do that. Uh, but yeah, I was say, I'm, I'm right there yeah. with you. I, I, I definitely think this is one of those games. Again, I don't think we've had a game like this in a while where the Lions defense can probably go in there with, again, 
with just your front four, your linebackers have played great in run support. Trust those 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 front seven guys, and and then again, do whatever you want to do in coverage on the back end. Whether you want to play man, whether you want to play zone, but try to keep your safeties out of the play as frequently as much as you can, because I do think like that could be something that comes to bite them back in the butt. Yeah, I think. Uh, what would you say your like underlying point is to like make the Rams earn it? Like don't don't give up any. That's what I don't want to see, right? Like, yeah, just fourteen cheat points. Like whether it's born off of like the Lions turning it over and you give Stafford a twenty-yard field or a busted coverage and Nakua goes for eighty. Like that's what I don't want to see, just because I want them to earn it. Make them, you know, help. You know, that's what I'm saying. Well, and that's and I again, I think a lot of people have sat back and looked at this defense and just been like, oh, the past defense is terrible, and it's like it's been it it's been very bad the last three weeks. Yep. Go look at the previous three weeks. And I know the opponents are, are are different. I know the caliber of receivers are different. But also the, the, the quality of play on the defensive end was different. They weren't giving up nearly as many big plays, right? I think yep. just in this past game against the Vikings, they had like eight plays that they gave up over 20 yards in one game. Like, again, the Lions still came out on top. But a lot of that goes to the credit of the fact that you were playing a Nick Mullins. You give eight 20-yard plays to Matthew Stafford. Four of those are definitely touchdowns. <laughs> um, right, yeah, exactly. And that's that's I think that's what's reinforcing this thought process in my head so much is to not allow for the easy ones, right? Like that you gave yeah. Mullins last week. Because Stafford, like you said, Stafford will take advantage of those nine times out of ten, maybe ten out of ten. So yeah, make it make it tough. Stay in phase, communicate well, and I think you'll be in okay shape because you know, to my point, I know I beat it to death. Like the play where Nick Mullins is just throwing YOLO balls to Jefferson, you know, that's some, that's some rarefied air. Like the ones yeah. where you're like, how, how the hell did he catch that? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get the likelihood that you get a lot of those plays in this matchup is, is, is few and far between, right? Yeah. Obviously it's the playoffs. Crazy things have happened every single year in the playoffs, but Listen, we're, we're talking about, yes, you're getting a veteran quarterback and a veteran wide receiver that have been there, that have done it, but you're also getting some young guys. You're getting a rookie in, in Puka Nakua. You're getting a rookie in Kyron Williams, and you still have some guys on your defense that can take advantage of those things and make life difficult. So, um, I, again, I think we're on the same page. I think this offense does pose a threat, but like you're saying, with, with sound play, by making them earn it, this Lions defense can definitely make life hard for, for the Rams. Yep. I think, yeah. You know, I know we keep making these points at the end here, but yeah, make them earn it, win the turnover battle and limit the running. Like don't let them get going. If they get going, running the ball, that's where I'll be pretty nervous because then you're opening them up yourself to a lot of dangerous stuff in terms of what McVay and Stafford can cook up offensively. But again, like you said, Miko, we've, the Lions have faced off with a lot of the, the best running backs in football, some really vaunted running games, and the only game they really got gashed was Baltimore, and that was an anomaly because you're playing the MVP and <laughs> yeah, Todd Monken pulled out. like that. I'm telling you, that was the first week. I went and made a bet, commenters and uh, people watch this video, after the Ravens whipped our ass, I went and made a bet on Lamar winning the MVP and the Ravens winning the Super Bowl, and I'm feeling pretty good. About both them bets. <laughs> yeah, especially in the listen, especially with how the AFC looks right now. But mm -hmm. that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Let us know in the comment section below what are you thinking about when it comes down to this Rams offense? What are you most concerned about? And what do you think are the biggest things that this Lions defense needs to do to be able to keep the likes of Matthew Stafford, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, and Kyron Williams in check so that the Lions can have the best chance of winning this game and actually, you know, again, moving on to the next round of the playoffs. But so let us know that in the comment section. Also, be sure to head over to prideofdetroit.com if you're looking for any more content or any more coverage on the Detroit Lions as we get closer to this playoff matchup. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified of any time we upload another video, specifically part two of this video, where we're going to take a look at the Rams defense and talk about what the Lions have to look out for and also how they can probably take advantage of Aaron Donald in that group as well. So with all that said, I'm Miko. He's Morgan. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch and we'll catch you guys in the next one.